This right here is the All Powers R1500 portable power station, and it has become a piece of gear that I can no longer live without. It's become a staple on my desk, it's how I charge all of my devices, and in the event of a power outage, I know that I'm covered. It not only stores an extra thousand plus watt hours of energy, but it allows me to recharge via alternative methods like solar. And with four regular wall AC outlets, this thing can charge almost any device, including my full-size electric motorcycle. So today I'll be giving you guys my full detailed review of this product. Full disclosure, the company did send me this unit free of charge, but I can say whatever I want about the unit and they do not get to check the video before I upload it. Okay, so let's begin with the price because this unit right here, it doesn't look like it, but this is a budget power station. It comes in at just $600 and for that price you get a battery capacity of 1,152 watt hours and this is using the the newer upgraded lithium iron phosphate battery technology which has a much longer lifespan than the the more common lithium ion batteries. So this is rated at 3,500 charge cycles before any meaningful battery degradation and given the size of this battery that equates to multiple years of heavy usage. To give you guys some comparables here, two leaders in this category are the Anchor C1000 and the EcoFlow River 2 Pro. The C1000 is probably the closest competitor, both physically and on the spec sheet, but the capacity here is less at 1,000 56 watt hours and it's $50 more expensive at 650 bucks and the EcoFlow is even worse This costs the same as the all powers, but the capacity is much less at 760 watt hours and it's much weaker It can only output 800 watts to the AC outputs and so far I've had no compatibility issues charging devices I've tested off of this power station so the four AC outputs here are powered by pure sine wave inverter and each port is rated at 1800 watts of continuous power output with surge up to 3000 but even so 1800 watts is a very high value and I don't have anything that uses more than 1800 watts personally I mean the heaviest load I had is my electric motorcycle which pulls about 850 watts and this battery powered that no problem. And I should also mention that that's completely off of the internal battery. It does not require this unit to be plugged into the wall in order to reach that power output capability. But something pretty cool about this unit is that if you do have it plugged in, it acts as a UPS or an uninterruptible power supply. So in that mode, anything you plug into this is essentially getting the power from the wall, which decreases the load, extends the lifespan of this unit. But the key advantage here is that in the event of a power outage, this can within 15 milliseconds switch from the wall power to the internal battery, keeping your devices going in a sudden power outage. Now, when it comes to actually charging this unit, of course, we can use the AC, and the charging speed here is very impressive. It can charge at a rate of one kilowatt. And remember, this unit is just over one kilowatt of capacity, 1,156. So that means if this thing is completely dead, this massive battery can charge from zero to 100% in just over one hour. And that's pretty insane. It can charge essentially as fast as my phone, even though the battery here is way bigger. Although there is one downside of having super fast charging and that's that the, the fans do turn on. Okay, this is going to be a an audio test of this unit to see how loud the fan noise is in various use cases. Use case one is going to be power out using both DC and AC. So nothing coming in and it's gonna be, it should be about 600 watts going out. And you should be able to hear the fans did turn on, but it's very quiet. So even if you keep this on your desk right next to you, as long as you're wearing say headphones, this amount of noise is really not a concern. And to give you guys an exact decibel reading, 41 decibels. Now let's go ahead and shut off the power output and begin charging the unit. So this is only power coming in and it should spike all the way up to 1000 watts. That is the, the wall charging speed. And you guys should be able to hear that. The fans just spun up to essentially their maximum and it's much louder than before. Again, the decibel reading here, 
So we jumped all the way to 54 decibels. And aside from AC power, you can charge this via DC power as well through either a, a car charger, they give you an adapter to be able to do that, or my favorite, solar panels. So along with this unit, I got a 200 watt solar panel that folds up into a very convenient kind of briefcase size. And they terminate in an XT60 connector, which I like because it's it's a standard connector. They don't use any proprietary plugs here. Now a 200 watt solar panel in ideal conditions can generate 200 watts of power. In my testing on a pretty sunny day, I was able to get about 170 watts of power input. And I will say that at this charging speed, the internal fan, it did turn on, but it was very quiet, especially in comparison to the fast AC charging. And you can see the cool little setup I had here where I was using solar energy to charge this battery while I was using the battery to charge my electric motorcycle. So essentially this allowed me to charge up my electric bike using 100% clean solar power. And that's just a super cool thing. I love how I can use this device to more precisely control my power consumption. Now, aside from the four 1800 watt AC outputs here using that pure sign inverter, we have some DC power outputs as well. And if you're charging a phone or any device that uses uh, a USB to charge, this is always going to be the more efficient option because you don't have to power an inverter. So if you can, you want to use these. And here we have two legacy USB-A ports that have a rated power output of 18 watts. And then below that we have two USB-C ports, each rated at 100 watts of fast charging. On the right here, we have a car port. I'm not sure why they include these, but I guess you can buy one of these adapters and get a few extra USB-C ports. And then finally at the top here, we have two 15 watt wireless charging ports. And then the screen I find to be very useful, and this is pretty much standard across any power station you're gonna see, we have the battery percentage, but to the right of that, we have my favorite part, which is the watts in and the watts out. I find the watts out to be pretty cool because you can see exactly how fast your devices are charging. And then above that, we have the input wattage. So at a glance, you can see if the battery is charging faster than it's outputting or vice versa. Final thing I'll say about this unit is that there is an app you can download but personally, I didn't find it too useful. You can essentially just monitor it remotely via the app. You can see the same information like the, the power in and out, and you can virtually enable and disable uh, the various power groups here. But unfortunately, that's it. I would have loved to see an option to adjust the, the charge speed, so that way you're not always charging at that fast 1000 watts. But unfortunately, that's not the case, and thus I found the app to be kind of not useful. And that's my review of the All Powers R1500, a portable power station that's affordable, $600, and when stacked up against the rest of the competition like the Anchor C1000 and the EcoFlow, for most people, most scenarios, this is just going to be the better deal. And it still gives you all the features that you need, like a clear visible display, a high quality pure sign inverter with 1800 watts of continuous power. We have that better lithium iron phosphate battery technology here, and it can recharge itself super quickly. So I'll leave a link to this unit below the video. If you guys enjoyed, I appreciate a like, subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next one.